Ben Carson, and I'm a candidate for President of the United States. You know, the only way to reimagine our government is to reimagine who is leading it. I'm Carly Fiorina, and I'm running for president. I am a candidate for President of the United States of America. In the span of two days, three Republican candidates have officially announced they're running for president. But as these candidates hit the campaign trail, there's growing concern that non-citizens could be the ones that determine the next election by voting illegally. Joining us with more on the story, Catherine Engelbrecht, president of True the Vote. Catherine is literally coming to us from the road in Topeka, Kansas. We should note she is pulled over. She is not violating Indeed. any traffic rules and regulations. Catherine, it's great to have you here, literally from the road on Newsmax Thanks. Prime. <laughs> Thanks very much for having me. Now, you're in Kansas. Chris Kobach is doing a bang-up job as Secretary of State in terms of voter ID and being aware of these problems. But a lot of states have moved through a full throttle to having non-citizens get driver's licenses and then get simultaneously registered to vote. How big of a problem have you found nationwide? Well, you know, we are we are right now undergoing a comprehensive uh, research project where we are going state by state to try and understand their process for not only registering these uh, newly minted quasi citizens, I guess you might call them, uh, in understanding what their driver's license looks like and not only what it looks like on its face and how that might impact the, their experience at the polling place, but but more importantly, how is the data being managed behind the scenes? And frighteningly, J.D., what we're finding is that in many of our largest states, California being one, uh, there is no separation, no separation between citizen and non-citizen status as far as the databases are concerned, which means the floodgates are open. And it's interesting you mentioned California, Catherine, because as I understand it, I don't believe the bill has come through that Democrat-dominated legislature yet. But the new Secretary of State there, Alex Padilla, very much wants any future uh, driver's licenses to be issued to people who simultaneously, with the driver's licenses, are registered to vote. I understand Oregon already has that in place. So are those two states obvious places where voter fraud can take place? Well, I, I think they are they are uh, foreshadowing of things to come. What we call that 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 process that you just described, we call it universal voter registration. And if you uh, if you do a little research on a universal voter registration, you'll find that both um, uh, Eric Holder and President Obama are both huge supporters of the idea that if you exist on any government role anywhere, you should be automatically registered to vote. You put that together with the problems that we're now seeing, again, in states like California, where there is no separation to protect the citizenship status, and, and it's, a, it's a perfect storm, and that's where we're headed. Uh, I mentioned Oregon in passing, and Catherine, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought there was a voters' initiative in Oregon in the last election that was supported by people across the spectrum specifically to try to keep illegals from voting, and yet the new governor uh, signed a bill from the legislature, and there again you have that aforementioned universal registration. To be fair to people around the country, people who may not be big political players, they understand what is at stake here, do they not, even in Oregon? I, I, I believe, in, and what we have seen over these years since True the Vote's um, inception in 2010 is is that more often than not, Americans may not uh, stand for a party or a candidate, but they will stand to protect their vote. And yes, JD, they absolutely understand what's at stake. When you when you don't uh, you don't have to prove who you are when you vote. You don't even have to be an American. Um, at that point, it becomes a body count to the polls. You're no longer competing on the battlefield of ideas. You're just dragging people across the finish line, and that's not the way the republic was ever intended to run. Catherine, we have about a minute left. If people suspect voter fraud or want to take action, what do you recommend to them? We absolutely recommend them to get involved. They can check out truthevote.org, come to our site. We offer online trainings. We'll help support you in every way that we can to encourage you to um, take a stand for election integrity in your community. But at the end of the day, 
you've got to reach out locally and be that that ever present uh, set of eyes and ears in the polls. Observation changes things, but we've got to stay engaged or we're going to lose it. And I understand your organization has brought high tech into play an app called Vote Stand. 30 seconds. Can you tell me how it works? Sure thing. Vote Stand is the nation's first voter fraud reporting mechanism. So you can go and download it for your iPhone or for your Android and report what you see, keep up to date on what's happening inside of the polls. Uh, it's real time, and we hope we'll provide some real solutions. Catherine Engelbrecht, I have a sneaking suspicion we're going to talk about this more in the days ahead. For now, you have our thanks. We look forward to having you back real soon here on Newsmax Prime. You heard what Catherine had to say. Do you want to comment? You can do so via email, Facebook, and Twitter. And we're coming right back.